Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamonds trip young and intern time For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh -huh. they got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the archive even tell a neighbor, tell a Bobby sent ya From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about son Real fans, real talk dot com, I'm out one Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com What's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk A lot of stuff went on this week in sports Most of it we're not going to talk about Because uh, it was some nonsense that happened But, you know, we're going to get into that in a minute <laughs> We got we got we got a whole bunch of surprises for y'all today, including the Super Bowl champion that will be joining us. And go, I don't know. We got background music and whatnot today. They, you know, somebody's least, a little excited yeah, back there. Yeah, yeah. We got our technical director is a little too excited. You need to slow your roll, brother. We're gonna give you your moment. All right. I put you on the gram earlier and just knock it off. You know. Let me introduce my co-host right now. Mark the stat man, Scavage, what's up, man? Mark the salty stat man, Scavage. <laughs> <laughs> Some people would say we got the. I mean, come on, you have to put the Eagles out there right now. Right can now. we can we do the intros first, Cliff? Jeez. Wow. This is what happens when when you're, when you're technically right to the Eagles fan. The trigger happy. Eagles you know what? It's a saying too. I, I believe it goes: the sun even shines on the dogs. Some days, I don't know if we can say that word on TV. See, now I, now I got to point out that it's their first championship in the history of, of the Eagles, which is 80 years. First Super Bowl. First, first, Super, Bowl. first Super Bowl. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, 50. Yes. So 50. It took 52 Super Bowls total for them to, 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 get, to one. get one. And they're still tied for last in their division. As, I mean, not even tied. They need to win one more to be tied for the last in their division. And Super Bowl wins with the Redskins. But we got Eric Sanchez <laughs> back uh, joining yeah, us. Yeah, man. I'm happy to be back. I had a couple weeks off. Uh, shout out to Cliff, man. Cliff, big time Eagles fan. He didn't give up hope even after Wentz went down. Well, they um, never give up hope. They're yeah. always listen, delusional. But, listen, like, it, we got to let him get his moment, though. We got to let him have his moment. I gave him his moment. I put him moment, on Instagram man. earlier. He, he gets example. all summer. He gets all summer until no, damn August. Man. No, yeah, no, he does. No, Come damn on. the mustard. Here's, Come on. Okay, we're not going to play that Here's game. Here's how delusional Eagles fans are. He thought that just because the team won a Super Bowl that we were actually going to give him some type of respect. <laughs> we're being an Eagle. Like, he said, oh, you got to respect me now. I was like, it what? Nice like, where? Time, where? I mean, we respect you as the that, director Cliff. of the show. So, we respect we you as a person. We just don't respect day. you as an Eagles so fan. So, basically... <laughs> Who your fandom, it? your fandom was never respected by the, no, by the whole thing. Yeah, it was never respected. Through, through snowballs at Santa. <laughs> exactly. Who respects Which that? Which is why you were cursed. Then for you got people. You you win a Super Bowl yeah, for the first time. It took a, it took fifty two Super Bowls to get there, and then you go start ruining your own city. You breaking up WalMarts and convenience stores and flipping over cars and whatnot. You got no class. That's your problem. If you, if you actually, if you actually if you actually won something every once in a while, you wouldn't act like that. But your fans, you know, act like. Delusional fans like, like yo, Stan Cliff, Nelson. man, I, I, have your moment in the sun. Enjoy that, man. I saw a clip that had I definitely will. at the parade or whatever the guy who was making his speech was dressed as a court jester, yeah, because they're clowns. Listen, <laughs> like, I agree. The, the Listen, we can say whatever we want, Stan, man. You notice, know I, I, you notice know because I noticed if if the Knicks would have win a uh NBA finals, I don't know how I would act. So I'm oh, never yeah. going to diss the I'm Eagles not fans. Destroy my own no. neighborhood or anything. Listen, like, if the Knicks as long as we've been waiting, as long as we've been waiting too. Like I don't, you're rioting when you won. Like what is the point of that? If you yeah. waited as long as we have it, there's no telling no, what we would it'll do. It'll be that scene in the movie, the real slow motion, emotional. You see the one tear drop from Statman's eye slowly rolling <laughs> down his cheek. <laughs> Tears of joy. <laughs> Philly fans have been waiting a long time. Luckily, we don't have to worry about that anytime soon. The Eagles actually have had a good team. The Knicks do not have this, a good team this, or anything that's close to a good say? team. All right. Yeah, we, we don't. We what don't have. Just a, say, 
Cliff, could you could you focus on being a technical no, director? Again, no, you be the be the technical director and, and stop trying to be on TV with please. us. All right, don't nobody want to hear that please. nonsense. Keep that negativity away from me, Cliff. Cliff, keep that negativity away from me. Isn't the you went and in the, insulted the Knicks? Isn't Cliff a Knicks fan? Why would he want you to repeat that again? Exactly. Like, come on, Cliff, have a seat. Listen, did he forget? I don't got. That I don't got listen, the Eagles had a good team. Listen, I don't got. To, oh, I don't okay. got time for That's all that. Cliff, we got we got a real Super Bowl champion in the building tonight. I don't got time for them. For them. And he played for the Eagles too. Yeah, but he won a Super Bowl with the Seattle Seahawks. One of the founders of the Legion of Boom is in the building tonight. He played right? for the Giants too. But. You know, well, he got, you know he had a little injury for the Giants. Yeah. So we didn't get to we didn't get to have the the full season. You know, with, with Walter Thurman. Cause I think he would have did better, you know, staying in New York and you know and running with with, with Eli and uh, and those guys. But you know, instead of running a back at interception slash touchdown, <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, it was 80, 83 yards. Yeah. You didn't have to do that, Walter. Okay, you didn't have to do that, man. To your former team like that, but you know it it, it is what it is. We we just gonna we gonna we gonna clip. You had your moment. That's it. Could you pull up the highlight tape so we could bring out one of yeah, the, yeah, we, the founding members of the Legion of Boom, Super Bowl we gotta, champion? We, we, we got to hear what he Thurman. had to say about the game. Yeah, about we, the state we, of the NFL real right now. He he drove all the way back from Philly just to just to get up with us and talk about this Super Bowl. He made so it out clip, the city. If you would, please, as crazy it is over there. Let that 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 beautiful bean footage play. Welcome back. I know you're not just joining us, but well, just in case you are, we are back with Super Bowl champion, found one of the founders of the Legion of Boom, 
Walter Thurman is in the building. And I got before before we started, just you know, we, we spoke about the little pick six you had against you know Eli and the Giants. But if you know my Giants fandom will not allow me to add that clip to that uh, tape that you guys saw right there. <laughs> yeah, I completely well, understand. Right. Yeah, I, I know how it is. <laughs> but welcome, welcome to Real Fans Real Talk. We we appreciate you uh, coming out. You know, we got a lot to get to because I know you were in Philadelphia. You, you you were rocking out with the Eagles. I'm a little disappointed in that. But, you know, they, they were the last team you played for. So what was the energy like in uh, in, in Philly? Oh, man, it was it was crazy. You know, it's a long time coming for those those sports fans out there. You know, they haven't won, they haven't won the big ship, you know, and never. You know, they got some, they, they got some championships, you know, uh, before the merger and everything. But, you know, it wasn't good enough. You know, they had nothing really to hang their hat on, like, you know, being competitors with the, the, the Giants and stuff like that and the Cowboys and, you know, uh, these other divi uh, play teams in other divisions. But, you know, the, it means a lot to the fan base out there for, for those guys coming in and, and coming through this time, you know. Definitely. Now, yeah, seven. Wanted to take one of the fan mail questions since we advertised that you were coming on. One of our fans, uh, Greg from Staten Island, wrote in, Walter, last year was your best year with uh, statistically, why did you retire so early? At the age of 28, I'm going to add, and also it's not because you weren't any good because you had offers for up to $4 million, so you turned down the money and you retired after only six years, so... Well, yeah, I mean, it was uh, statistically it was my best year, but personally it, it wasn't my best. My technique was a little sloppy out well, there. Well, you're also playing for the Eagles instead of the Giants, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can't be happy playing for yeah, the Eagles. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a little tough, you know, but it was uh, just the injuries got a bit, the better of me, you know what I'm saying? After the wear and tear coming off that pec injury, I mean, I was looking forward to coming out with the Giants and stuff like that and being able to, to set up shop here and everything and how did uh, that happen? Lifting or? Uh, I was in a game. We were playing against the Cardinals, you know, and I wanted to go for a strip, and uh, he turned the other way while I was pulling, and the tendon turned right off the bone. You know, it was mm -hmm. open shut case at that point. They knew on the sideline, like, your season's done for you know six <sighs> six to eight months. You know, at that point, you know, so it was one of those things to going through the rehab again, and uh, it's a lot that goes on. That the rehab process is more strenuous than actually playing and just getting ready for those games. Yeah. You know, you're there, you know, six to seven days a week. With fans don't really get to understand that, you know, when guys get hurt, you know, these guys are here uh, year round and don't have no break and just, you know, just predicated on that the whole time. So that was one of the reasons why I uh, wanted to, to get out the shot, though, you know, get out the game and stuff like that. From yeah, the time. an ACL injury also in college. It, yeah, or yeah so tore my ACL, or MCL, PCL, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't fun at all. I don't wish that on anybody, <laughs> you know, having <laughs> spend, to go through that. Spent a lot of time in rehab. Yeah. And yeah, and then the two years later, I re-break my leg once I get the opportunity to start for the Seahawks and stuff like that, you know, and... Uh, another another setback and came back and you know, was able to win a Super Bowl with the with the Seahawks, you know. And personally, I thought that was one of my better years um, because I was just attention to detail and sound. You know, I didn't get any touchdowns that year on the defense side of the ball, you know. So I took a lot of pride in that to where my my year in Philly, I gave up like three, you yeah. know, on some coverage si si situations, you know. So I just hold myself to a high standard, and even though that I did, you know, have a statistical, you know, better year. And I was also play, playing a different position too. You yeah. know, playing safety and going out there Absolutely. and just kind of flying Important, around, yeah. you know. So it was a, a just a different game and, and just my first year going out there ever playing safety, you know. Done it here there in practice, but n nothing in, in a game. So that was a lot of fun, you know, that being my last year, playing a new position and just being able to, to roam around in some cases, you know. I want to take you back to the beginning of your career, Walter. You guys were very young in Seattle. And that camaraderie that you guys had and, and what you built up was very special. Talk to us a little bit about those early years in Seattle with you, Sherman, Earl, Cam, Browner. Yeah, I mean, you, you're talking about a bunch of guys with chips on their shoulder. You know, even Earl was the first round, you know, the, the second round in the first, uh, in the first round draft that we picked up, up because we had picked up Russell Kuhn. He played with a chip on his shoulder. He came yeah. in, he got drafted, he was 20. <laughs> you know, he can't even go to the bar and get a drink cause yeah. you, when you first get in there. But, you know, so, but he had a lot to prove. Same thing with Cam getting draft, uh, drafted in the fifth round. I'm getting drafted in the fourth round. Sherm getting drafted in the fifth round. You know, uh, Browner coming out of uh, the CFL. You know, he got a, a brief little stint there for his career, and he came back and had a second chance. You know, so it was a bunch of guys that were hungry, and we just played with uh, that, that camaraderie and that brotherhood, you know, and, and we just pushed each other on the field and off the field, and that was the biggest thing. Uh, and you see a bunch of these guys, like, you know, 
Earl and, and Cam, you're going to be, you know, they're going to get in the Hall of Fame <laughs> just for the, what they brought to the game and how they play every year, you know. So, I mean, it's great to be part of the, those guys and, and getting drafted in that class and stuff like that and seeing what they were able to accomplish. And then you look at Sherm as well, another guy who's going to go be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And you say even Brandon, if he would have played longer, he had the potential to be able to go that same route too, you know, just from the short time that he was in the league and he, his stats was showcased that, you know. And so it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun playing with those guys. Yeah. Who, who came up with the name Legion of Boom? I don't know. I think it just it just <laughs> popped up out of nowhere. To, to be honest, yeah, though, I mean, a lot of times yeah. it's someone in the yeah. media. Yeah, that yeah. Comes it, it, it was just random. I mean, you, you have Cam coming out there and playing the way that he does, you know, and just yeah. lying dudes up. So I mean, just the kind of like that Ray Lewis back in the early 2000s, that mindset that got running backs were just, you know, they are kind of a little timid going against Ray Lewis when they played yeah. play with him. The same thing with, with Cam. You weren't trying to come across the middle, yeah. and you weren't trying to come any kind of path like he was going to put you down. You know, and, it, and he, I've seen him destroy linemen. You know, th those are some of the plays that fans don't get to notice. They see the receiver getting hit downfield or whatever, but I've seen him blow up, you know, 320-pound yeah. linemen. You know, yeah. like they were <laughs> – you know, a buck 90 or so. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, you talk about Cam just patrolling that middle and destroying guys. When you guys beat the Broncos in the Super Bowl, you feel that hit he put on uh, Demarius Thomas kind of like took their heart at that moment? It was early <laughs> in the game. But that big that hit was so big on him, it was almost like it was it was, it was big and big. Because Demarius is a big dude too, yeah, he was you a big know? receiver. Yeah, so I mean, it was one of those things. I mean, we were flying around all week. You know, we were we came there strictly for business that Thursday before <laughs> that game. You know. Everyone was locked in. We had a good grasp of what they were going to run on their offense, you know, and it, we just it just played out how we, we, we practiced for it, honestly, you know. And then that big that first hit was a, a statement to let you know, like, if you're coming through here, Cam's going to be here all day. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a long, yeah, it's long It's going to be a long one. It's going to be a long one, you know. And that just uh, from a psychological standpoint, that takes a toll on those guys, you know, because dudes don't want to get hit in the mouth like that, you know. Not at all. In the way that he, he hits, you know. He, he'll put you down. It's not going to be good. <laughs> yeah. You know? Going back – even further to uh, like your high school days, you were a pretty good wide receiver as well. Yeah, dab a little you, bit. Yeah, when, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 want, I, want, I want to play a little bit. Little 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 yeah. I, I see how player. happy you are with yeah, that. I'm, it's like you, you want yeah. the glory of the touchdowns and everything, and some of the yeah. other guys don't always get that glory. Hey, hey. Especially Lyman. That's what I did in high school and semi yeah. pro, whatever. But I mean, did you choose defense because you were better at it, or is it just how did that happen? My my, my favorite player is Randy Moss. I'm so happy to see him get in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He should have been in Congrats. out the gate. You yeah, know, but he, he changed the whole game of defense is played. You know, you have to send two guys and just keep him back because he's going to run past both of those guys, you know. Yep. And he wasn't scared to go across the middle. So, I mean, I, I kind of emulated my game from an offensive standpoint and took that to the DB side too. You know, if the ball's in there, go get it. You know, yeah. get, like Randy Moss, go get Moss, you know. Yeah. Just taking that mentality on the defensive side of the ball. But it was uh, – I, I only had one scholarship to play a receiver, though. You know, it kind of mm. hurt, you know uh. what I mean? No, I guess the scholarship was like San Diego State or Idaho State, and I just chose to – Preferred to, Oregon. Yeah, and I took the, the scholarship to go to, to Oregon and play DB, and I just figured that would give me a better chance just longevity-wise getting into the league and stuff like that, you know, because playing corner is, you know, one of the toughest positions out there, you yeah. know, and especially if you want to be able to play a long time. Then you have that opportunity to you play nickel, you can play stretch your career out some, and yeah. you can transition to safety because it's kind of interchangeable positions, you know. So I was fortunate enough to be able to play all three of those positions, you know, to be able to. I'd say I'd say it worked, my it worked out for you. You made, you made, you made <laughs> yeah, the right choice. You got Absolutely. the Super Bowl uh, ring. Um, now, when 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 the Seahawks uh, went back the the following year, I know. Uh, that that controversial play call at the at the, at the end of the game. Yeah. I, have, did you speak to any of the players after that? Like, does, you know, did they did they feel like Marshawn should have ran the ball in? All right, I talked to Marshawn. You know, he, you already know how he feel about that. Of, co well, of course, yeah, so yeah. I mean, beast know. mode. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Get the skittles I mean, and let's go. I mean, it's uh, I think it was like second down, yard yeah. four yard line, and you had a bunch of times. So you might as well just. Give it to him all three times. I mean, yeah. He's going to get in there, you know. At some point. It was, at, it was at, at some point, you know. Yeah. Even like, if he didn't, you still went with your best option. Yeah, yeah. option. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just too tight down there to try to throw the ball in one of those pockets and some of those route combinations. You know, you, you prepare for those during the week so you know when they're coming. You yeah. know, it's not too surprised if you're, if you're do studying and doing your homework at that place. And, and they were doing their homework, you know, and they yeah. came in and jumped around, you know. And Brandon was on the opposite side of Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. You know, he's he, the one who he, actually jammed yeah, up the receiver. He got a nice there, yeah. jam on there to, to, mm. to, 
to stop that cross around, and Malcolm Butler just came in there and just swooped it. So I mean, the, the oddest part of that is like the play before Marshawn actually got like four or five yards on the running play to get him down to they, the yeah. to They the couldn't two. stop him on the yeah. run. They couldn't yeah. stop him. So he was having got, a big day. Yeah, I don't understand why you don't you know hand the ball off. I think that was one of those decisions that ranks up there with uh, Belichick not playing Malcolm Butler in this year's close. Super Bowl. Very close. <laughs> yeah. close yeah. Do you feel uh, a lot has been made of friction within that Seattle locker room? Was that something that was there when you were there, or was that something that developed over time, um, where Sherman has been quoted as saying him and Wilson just have a working relationship, and it's been talked about that the offense, I mean, the defense kind of feels like the offense is getting baby through through the situation there? Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't, uh, can either, he, he, he's in the right line, you know, I mean, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's business, it's work at the end of the day, you know, you come here, you do your job, you know, everyone's yeah. accountable for their actions, you know, and it's just that mindset, you know, and it's it's keeping everyone accountable and not playing towards... Um, it's, it's a tough business. You get the media component to where guys have to, to handle that, you know, and you want your guy to be, uh, your, your guys to be mentally prepared for that week and not having to worry about what the fans are saying or what the media is saying. So that stuff has an effect on on the players and stuff like that, you know. And um, just in general, the, those guys are just a real tight knit group, you know. Once it does come to protecting their team and stuff like that, because when it gets Sundays, you know, all the other stuff is out the window. You know, we come together as a team yeah. and you know and putting our differences aside. But if, if there are any dis differences, and we have one objective, and that's to win the game, you know. So it's always putting it in perspective when it's time to, to show up for work, you know. Now, we, we're big uh, video game uh, players here. Okay. We just did our 2K tournament, but we, Y'all play know, NHL? You play the hockey? No. I do, actually. I, don't, I don't get down play, in the hockey. I only play, I only play Madden in uh, 2K. That's <laughs> okay, it. okay. But we're thinking about, you know, we're thinking about doing the Madden tournament. But So I went online. I went back because I had to go back, and I'm checking your, your, your rating on Madden. It's pretty good. You had a you had a ninety four one year. You had a ninety one one year, and they said if you got two interceptions on Thanksgiving, it'll go up to a ninety seven. So was your mindset in the game ever? I need to boost my stats up on Madden. Let Man, me get this extra interception I mean, here. I stopped playing Madden a couple of years prior, uh, when I was really out there starting and stuff like that. But okay. um, you didn't want you want to lose I did, the focus. I did, I did, nah, I just lost interest. I didn't really play that much and stuff like that, you know. But uh, I got, I did get back on picking up the sticks, and I've been playing the hockey actually, especially be, being in Philly. Okay. A bunch of those guys out there, Flyer fans and everything like that, you know. But uh, interesting for it, though. They say some some players talk about their Madden rating. How is that in the locker room? Is there ever any <laughs> uh, any smack talk about it? that's why your Madden rating is only seventy nine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you 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 will have some smack talk. Yeah, I mean you have the receivers versus the DBs out there yeah. going in at, at practice. You know anything can be said at that point. You know it's just uh, just pure competition. And guys just come from culture, just you know, make, clowning, and making jokes and stuff like that, you know. So any ammunition is all ammunition, you know. <laughs> who, who, who? I mean, I would assume it would be Richard Sherman, but if not him, who was the king of smack talk on, in the locker room? Nah, man, everyone talks smack. I mean, it's it's tough to just to pinpoint one yeah. person. It's just Richard got the the reputation because yeah. of that, you know, yeah. that NFC Championship game, you know. <laughs> to yeah, I mean, Doug Baldwin looked like a big talker though. Doug he, talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug looked yeah, like a big talker. Yeah, he 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 may be a small stature, but don't he he'll give you that business out there, you know, and he'll talk smack behind you too, you know. So and you talk about the NFC Championship game. Everyone knows the game against the Niners where Sherman gets the tip. You guys had a pretty intense rivalry with the Niners for like two or three years, but they, you guys were the best two teams. Yeah. Talk about that rivalry and then obviously getting over the hump and beating them to go on to the Super Bowl. I mean, it was huge because, I mean, they went back to the NFC Championship three years in a row. You know, they were in the Super Bowl the, the year before. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot riding on the division and just, like you said, that rivalry and stuff like that, you know. And we felt like, I mean, as it played out, it felt like that was like the Super Bowl, you know, because it came down to the last play of the game and yeah. it was, you know, hard fought through the whole thing and it was the number one defense and number two mm -hmm. defense is going at it so it was like we whoever was going to win that game would had a yeah. strong chance to go out there to win the super bowl that year you know so that, i mean as we kind of look back at look back at that and seeing that it's like dang like, that was kind of like that super bowl moment that felt more like the super bowl after it was all said and done than the actual super bowl moment you know of what the super bowl is supposed to be like the patriots uh, the Seahawks game, or even the the, the Patriots in the Philly game, you know, it comes down to the last play to where it's not over until that the, the, that clock strikes mm -hmm. zero. You know, do you ever think like a little bit of regret that you retired because maybe if you stayed with Philly, you'd have another ring uh, to add? Or you know, I mean, I, I dabble with the thought, you know, of. Uh, of getting getting in shape and get ready for the the end of the season and jumping on a, a contender. Rivas <laughs> <laughs> Rivas just did it, so it hey, you know, like yeah, you know, I mean, and Philly was 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 one of those teams we're looking at. You know, I had Tampa Bay up there too. Begin, beginning of the season, they looked nice on paper. Mm -hmm. You know, I was gonna go out yeah, there and play with my guy T.J. Ward that went to college with. You know, so that would have yeah. been been a cool little deal. But no, I never pulled the trigger. Uh, 
got caught up in a, a, a music uh, headphone tech company that I started called Fast Stereo. Mm -hmm. So I've been spending a lot of time with that and getting that going and stuff. So it was uh, everything worked out though. I'm still happy for the guys down in, in Philly. I thought uh, when I came down there that you know there's going to be opportunity, but you know the offensive line wasn't as strong as it was. But it's it's that same team though. You know, yeah, a lot they, of the same guys. It's yeah. a lot of the same guys, especially in that core, you know, but they, they got that offensive line tied up, you know, and uh, you seen where Doug Peterson was going to do, and, I mean, Nick Foles came up there and stepped up. Yeah. You know, when everyone – and when they, the whole city doubted him. When he, when, when Wednesday yeah. went down, everyone was down down Foles, and it's funny to yeah. see that just talking to these guys and, like, hating on – Hating on falls and not thinking that he's gonna take him to the championship, and he proved them all wrong, you know. So, it was well, I mean, he has it in him. He played well for them before. It's just the consistency factor. Yeah. I mean, do you think one of the questions I was gonna ask you after somebody wins a Super Bowl, after somebody gets a big contract, do you think sometimes maybe their work ethic kind of falls off or their ego kind of gets the best of them? Have you seen that no, with yeah, certain I mean, players? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that happens. You know, it's just human nature, just a. Uh, that allure of the of the money and the fame that comes that comes with it, you know, and uh, some guys are able to to withstand that, you know, and be able to push through and still grind and still be be hungry and not complacent within that situation, you know. Earl and Cam Chancellor are two of those guys, you know, they got yeah. big contracts and they still came out and up their level of play, you know, within that, you know. So the guys can, you know, take in that compensation for what they work hard for, you know. And um, and still continue to perform at a high level, you know, and that's the one thing I do respect with 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 Earl having a chip on his shoulder. He came into the league talking about I'm gonna be a Hall of Famer. It's our rookie year, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that's the mindset you kind of gotta yeah, have. Yeah, that's the mindset he had, and you, you see him every year. I mean, he he made the Pro Bowl, and then he was a first team All Pro, All Pro, and then he just year after back year after back, you know. So he just uh, he made it happen, you know. Yes, definitely. Now you mentioned the the the, the headphones, the, the fan stereo joints. I gotta say, I got my little sis Donche. Uh, she sent me a pair over. The, I love the headphones. They have the Bluetooth joints. Yeah, my, they my, they yeah, have yeah, the, yeah. You send me the address. I'll, yeah, I'll, they got I'll you guys up. Yeah, appreciate yeah, that, yeah. man. Yeah. They got it. They got. I got them in my pocket. I, I had them on the train uh, ride over here, so they they definitely on point. And I seen y'all got uh, y'all got little Boosie and uh, Ao and Tao. Yeah, uh, little Boosie and Ao. Uh, repping the brand side. now. So like it's a celebrity lifestyle branded headphone. You know, we uh, partnered up with a bunch of different artists, musicians, athletes. You mm -hmm. know, so it's a uh, Helping these guys, you know, record sales are down right now. You know, everyone is streaming music. You know, they have to make their living on making tours and stuff like that. You know, and so it's just helping provide a different alternative revenue stream. You know, a bunch of these companies are, you know, giving them a little endorsement here and there and making, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. off their likeness and image and stuff like that. You know, and it's just trying to, you know, kind of give an education aspect of like, you know, you're a brand, you're a business. We're all brands and businesses, you know, and that's what the emergence of social media has told us, you know, because there's a lot of social media influencers and people with followings and, you know, and being able to get their their craft off the ground, you know, and so it's a it's an interesting time and age of, of technology, you know, to where everyone has the opportunity to be able to uh, make a great living doing something they love to do, you know. So it's one of those things to just being able to encourage that. At what point in your career did you know you wanted to transition into the tech world? I've always dabbled in the space growing up, you know. Um, just football and sports just took more of the forefront than anything. So it was kind of everything was uh, predicated off that. Uh, mm -hmm. Off season, I'm I'm studying. Uh, studying film or I'm studying the tech space, you know, just getting thing, get, getting myself ready for when I do retire, I can hit the ground running. And one of those things with me having these injuries, I spent a lot of time, you yeah. know, researching and learning because I, I wasn't on the field, you so know, you I'm laid up time in the house or whatever. Yeah, ex wait, a lot, bunch of extra time, you know. So, I mean, I played three years, uh, I played six years in the league, but I actually only played three of, on the field. The other, the other three, I was, uh, I was, you know, in the streets and getting healthy and, you know, learning a craft for, you know, life after football. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, the average is only three years, you know. So it's yeah. one of those things to kind of put it in perspective, especially when I tore my knee. That put, er put everything in perspective because I'm sitting here, like, you know, even overly optimistic. Like, I'm probably, I can get drafted, but still, like, maybe I don't get drafted. You know, I'm damaged goods now in the eyes of the league, you know. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was a lot of different things uh, transpiring within that thing, with that ideal and, I just wanted to get myself prepared for life after football. What, what do you What do you think about the? Because I know you know t talking about the injuries. You know we know that the you know concussions are probably one of the the, the biggest hindrances that football is having right now. Mm -hmm. So, is there any way that the NFL can make the game safer without taking away from <coughs> from the essence of football? The, the The essence of football is built on violence and mayhem. You know, so it's like you can't make a, you really can't make a vicious game safe. It's like saying trying to make war safe. You know, at that or point, or boxing, or boxing yeah. safe. You know, you, I mean, there's there's ways to be able to 
uh, avoid some of those contacts, you know, especially with boxing, you block and you get your head out the way so you don't take th those repetitive hits. Mm -hmm. Same thing in football, you know, it's just getting back to the basis of technique, you know. Um, you know, they're trying to, you know, alleviate s some of that aspect, but, you know, back in the day, I think, I think it was like 1912, they almost banned football out of the, out of the states of America yeah. because they had 12 deaths that year just from playing the game. You know, so, I mean, you, you see this, the severity in the sport, but um, and the game has uh, lined up a little bit, but, we're, you know, we're creating, you know, warriors out here. You know, guys are getting bigger, faster, stronger every year, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and everyone's coming out. Yeah. The parents are, you know, trained them at that age, you know, to, you know, we're going to have this shot and opportunity to be able to get a scholarship to go to school or, you know, make it to the NFL and, and be able to provide for the family and stuff like that. You know, so, we're, you know, we're just creating a culture to where it's uh, more and more. Uh, it could be vicious if they don't have these little different things in place, but more importantly, it's just the technique of the game that has to change, you know? What do you think, So, you know, because I have this debate constantly as far as helmet-to-helmet -helmet collisions. As a defensive player, you're taught to go down, hit with your shoulder, you know, and wrap and tackle, whatever. And sometime, in the, as an offensive player, you're taught to bring your head down, get lower so you can truck somebody, and it's just like, you, there's no way to plan for a helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision. Like, it's not like you're, you're looking to lead with your head because yeah. that hurts you, too. You see defensive players get injured. Yeah. And it's not like your intentions are necessarily helmet-to-helmet. -helmet. It just sometimes it turns out that way. Is that fair to say or do you, th you know, because someone else is like, no, they go head-hunting and they want to he helmet-to-helmet, like... I mean, is that fair to say that defensive players aren't trying to and it I mean, just I, constantly it happens incidentally? Yeah, I mean, you have guys that are you're, you're going to try to avoid some of those hits, but some sometimes it's just it happens. It's just part of the game, you know? Yeah. I mean, and then you also have guys that, you know, that do hunt out there, you they know? That's just the mentality care. of the game. Again, it's if you step between those white lines, you know, it's you got to protect yourself at all costs. You the know? best way to make you ineffective is to take you off the field. Yeah, exactly, you know? I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole concept of the game. And if so you, Brandon if, Cooks leave the Super Bowl because of a hell of a, a head. Big head. Yeah, and you know, and that, and that was just, he wasn't, his head wasn't on a swivel. <laughs> you yeah. know, he's running around thinking, trying to avoid these guys over here, not knowing that these guys are coming over here. And, you know, yeah, that's, that's just the reality of the game right yeah. there, just in that one play, you know? So it's a... Uh, it is, it's un, it's unfortunate when you see guys go down like that, you know. Yeah. But you you do understand like that's the consequence for playing, and everyone who signs up to play understands that, you know. And it's uh. Do you agree with the penalty being put in place though? Yeah, I mean it it depends on the situation because there are some situations to where that you could avoid it and it deserves yeah. a penalty, you know. Mm -hmm. And I mean. You see it in college football. If a guy gets that, they're getting ejected right out the gate. You know, you kind you kind of see it in point. slow motion, but a lot of times you can't really determine, you know, the the intentions. Yeah, the, the slow motion uh, does the game no justice. Yeah. You know, because you're seeing it. They're like, oh, look at him. He could have got out the way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's go. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a blink of an eye. A quick second. You, know, you, have, you have to react so quick. So I mean, it's uh, that gets a little bit skewed when you see that for a replay on. Uh, that's that's in slow motion, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, you think that like, oh, this guy could have got out the way. He could have did this, but you know, in theory, it does make it, it makes sense. He could have, you know. But yeah. the game is going yeah. so fast out there. It doesn't you know? work like yeah, that. It doesn't <laughs> work like down, and you're just you know lowering your head to make a tackle, and sometimes yeah. it just happens. It just that happens way. that way, yeah, for sure. Do yeah. you feel you were a physical player yourself on a defensive end? How do you feel about the concussion protocol and the way that's being handled by the league? Uh, I mean, it goes, uh, it's, it's a business, you know, and it goes both ways, you know, because you have guys who get, their, get, get hit and, you know, don't want to go through that protocol and want to stay in, you know, because the, the game and culture has been like, you know, it's a tough man's game and you've been taught to just, you just shake it off, you know, growing up, you know, before concussions really be, became mainstream and people started talking about it and stuff like that, you know, it was one of those things to where you just dust yourself off and you, you got back in there, you know. So it's, it's just guys just understand the gravity of what the concussion does, you know, and how it affects you in the long term, you know, to where guys, if they do get get it wrong, they will, they will take themselves out, you know. But, yeah. you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of pressure that's in the game because you have some guys that are trying to, you know, make a living, 
Yeah. You know, they get their the contract. One yeah. yeah, you know, or, you know, there might be an undrafted yeah. free agent who's on a team who's getting an opportunity to start. And, yeah. you know, it, the game's all about getting tape. you got to get tape and get reps out there for you to, to get cut or get picked back up or whatever the case may be. Lose you know? your position, you, too. Yeah, you lose your position. So, I mean, you have guys that, you know, that plays a factor towards, like, dang, I can't get hurt. You know, you don't make it nice tub is one of the sayings, you know. Yeah. So, you, know, you just can't you just can't make it because guys are constantly coming in and coming out and these organizations are, you know, it's all predicated on making, you know, hundreds and millions of thousands of dollars, you know. And they want the best guys to give them a chance to be able to put those to put the fans in the seats, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah at, the, at the end of the day, so. Now, I know that one of the other issues that's going on right now in football, Colin Kaepernick started to lead the torch, the whole kneeling during the, during the anthem. Um, what did you think about it when, when he first did it and to where it's at right now? I mean, I think it was initially to bring awareness, using your, utilizing your platform, uh, more importantly for communities of people who have reached out for decades now uh, about these type of situations and issues and going unheard, and him seeing an opportunity to utilize his platform and the viewership within that to, to make a statement to, to speak up for the little guy at mm -hmm. the end of the day, you know? And some of these guys in the locker rooms, they're affected Personally, it is their sister or their brother that are going through some of these situations who lose their life in, in these aspects. So it's not it's like a uh, not like a it's you know third party and they're representing someone else. Like this is close to home and we're we're a tight knit brotherhood to where it's like if my brother's going through something to where I'm gonna care and empathize within this situation. You know, you have a bunch of guys that are black, white, you know, Asian, whatever the case may be, coming together w w within that. You know, within the the locker room and stuff like that, having each other's backs and stuff. So um, I think. The, the point of making that, uh, bringing attention and awareness to it, you know, I think that happened and I think they were able to uh, pay the respects to the, the, the vets like everyone wanted within that situation. Yeah. And he got the idea from a military vet. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so it was somebody that was, wasn't a vet who gave him the idea to be respectful of taking the knee. Yeah. And that's what, you know, fans don't even see that aspect, you know, because they want to create it to the situation for whatever the case they want, you know, yeah. but it he went through... He, he did it the one way of actually, you know, uh, sitting down, being more disrespectful within that, and he reached yeah. out to, to, to fix that problem. And yeah. he did it in a respectful way of taking the knee in, within, that, in that, within that aspect. The knee in some ways is more respectful than standing, because you go to church, kneeling, you know, praying, respect, yeah. you know, yeah. even an injury, players get down on one knee, or when you speak to your coach, huddling up, you'd get down on, on one knee. knee. So it's not disrespectful to be on one knee. So you I mean, then at that point, you, if we're really nitpicking, I mean, you have got yet people that are all over the place that aren't even taking knees. They're standing around, walking, taking pictures, talking, yeah. doing yeah. whatever the case is. So, I mean, if you're holding everyone accountable, hold these people accountable too. Don't pick out someone who's uh, doing something that's uh, trying to bring attention or awareness or whatever the case may be. If we're holding everyone accountable, then hold everyone accountable. Let's not hold this guy accountable and not hold person that we think that's in a higher regard than everyone else. Yeah. We're all people, we're all the same. The, the, the second part of Tripp's question though is what it evolved to now in this huge, is this person, who, who's standing, who's sitting beforehand and you know, what do you think as far as what it evolved to now? I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I know Malcolm Jenkins has been one of the, the forerunners and leaders with the liaison between the player rep and with the owners and stuff like that. I know they've been in talks and, and compromised, but I'm not sure privy to those details as far as the actions taking step forward. I think that's just more of a awareness to where uh, it needs to be looked at from a, a governmental standpoint. You know, cities, you know, governing the, their, you know, uh, police force and holding them accountable. Because mm -hmm. the whole thing's about accountability now, you know, that's what we're talking about. So it's, you know, something has to happen within that structure to, to where you have guys that are just able to, to, to jump into this uh, service that we put in such high regard mm -hmm. with minimal training, you know, and knowing that, you know, that they're going to be put in hostile situations. How can you handle a hostile situation if you've never grow, put, been in a hostile situation, mm -hmm. you know, or you're patrolling a a very underpoverished uh, socioeconomic area yeah. and what goes on in that situation if you've never been there and experienced that situation you're going in there walking on eggshells because you don't know the the landscape of where you're going you know so there's a lot of different things that could be done to to help that situation on both sides you know uh, it just again it just comes back down to accountability as far as like because I mean, you did mention like the, the government and, and all of that um, 
you know, we've seen uh, the president. He had a few issues with the NFL this season. He called them, you know, sons of bees and, yeah. and whatnot. And, you know, as a, as a result, we saw the Golden State decided not to go to, to the White House for the visit. And now we already saw a lot of Chris Long, out, yeah. Malcolm Jenkins, Tory Smith said they weren't going. They said it was a couple or more. Uh, would, you, would you have gone? Because I know, are you, cause, I mean, you was a different uh, president in office yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you went. Yeah. But would you have gone to, to the White House if, if your teammates weren't going? Or, like, what would you do in that situation? Oh, man, it's a... Uh... It's a, it's an interesting situation, you know. It's uh, it's the whole the whole aspect of what the country has become has been is kind of interesting, you know. Uh, we've opened up the floodgates to allow anyone be become president, you know, and and be the most disrespectful within that space, and uh, we don't we don't really care at that point, you know. So yeah. then it's like, why do we care about these NFL players taking a knee? If we don't even care about the person who's in who's in charge at that point, you know. So I mean, at the end of the day, we we need to all as individuals just figure out that aspect of what we want and what what it means to us and what we stand for at the end of the day, you know. And as far as going to the the presidency, if if, if I was part of the team, yeah, I don't, I don't know, you know. I think. Uh, you had a little more swag in the office when you went there. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My main man Obama was up in there, so. You know, I mean, uh, just being at the White House was a, was a great experience anyway, you know. And if it's something to where uh, if the guys aren't going to go during that time because of who's who's in office and stuff like that, they should still take the time to try to get back in into the, the White House mm -hmm. and, and see that aspect, you know, because of just what it stands for, you know, being, being American and stuff like that. And. Uh, just that process of all the, all the the world champions that that play in professional sports in America have gone through that space. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it's uh, yeah. Uh, just if, if half the team was going, the other half wasn't. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I go see Trump. Let's see what he's talking about, man. Uh -huh. See, talking his nonsense. You know, I mean, at that point, it's free trip. So <laughs> I, I, forgot who, I forgot who it was. DC, a nice spot though. So. I, I know Charles Barkley says it's an honor to just be in the White House, no matter who the president is, and. Uh, I, I don't know if it was him or someone else also added that it would be good to for them to actually talk to the president and voice their issues and you know to get a different understanding you know you know behind the scenes what really goes on instead of you know the cutted the selective things that we we hear or you know out there in the media and everything. But. Yeah, I mean it would be a great it would be a great opportunity, especially you're talking about Malcolm Jenkins being that guy that's leading that forefront and he he just won the Super Bowl, yeah. you know, and being able to maybe be yeah. that voice of reason and be a talk on the behalf of the people and stuff like that, you know. They I mean they could you know have a conversation. He, he's that's also one that, of those guys think about, that yeah. just called and the there is a microphone a right there on the yeah. <laughs> you could bring the you could go and bring the topics up right I'm, there. I'm, the I'm, sure he wouldn't, I'm sure he wouldn't address them yeah. at that moment. Uh just to circle back real quick. You played against Cap uh, during his his best statistical seasons, yep. is he good enough? Should he be a starting quarterback right now? And do you feel he'll get another opportunity? Uh, I mean, can, he can play in this league for sure. You know, I mean, just to, I mean, he t he took the, the Niners to the you know three consecutive you know NFC championships and then to the Super Bowl. You know, yeah. I mean, you have I mean, Grant they they have great defenses, but I mean, he, his he still was averaging with twenty five points a game or something like that, yeah. you know? So, I mean, he was putting up points and being able to, to rely on that defense as well. I mean, he for sure can play in this league, you know? Um, there's some quarterbacks that had some very subpar years, you know, <laughs> and he uh, could easily have been a backup around. and had that opportunity to help a team out, you know? But, again, there's that political aspect and stuff like that to where um, – yeah, it's business, <laughs> you yeah. know? I Do mean, you feel yeah. that now with, with some time that has gone by that he'll get that shot, though? I mean, I, I've seen something that Goodell said that uh, it's up to the discretion – of the owners to let him back. So, I mean, if he's saying that, then that means that was one of those things where <laughs> they luck. have someone to hush hush of not getting <laughs> back in. If that's if he's saying that. So, I mean, if a team was looking for that opportunity to have a, a, a quarterback that's been there, even from a backup standpoint, I think there's, there's 32 teams out there, and I think he can get on one of those at least. Yeah, he definitely deserves to be at least a backup. Do you think he's good enough to be a starter, though? I mean, uh, I mean he's going to have to compete. You can't just give yeah. anybody. Yeah, he has he has to go out there and compete. You know, I mean, even if I was owner, I would uh would have him go out there and compete for the job and not just yeah. be able to give him a job. You know, so um, I mean that goes for all quarterbacks. You know, at that point, you know, some quarterbacks out there get complacent. They feel like they're going to be out here and, and throw the game away. I mean, yeah. <coughs> my man's uh, did it a little bit at the at the at the game and stuff, but um, yeah, I think he could, he could play though for sure. 
All right. Well, we got it is it is Black History Month. We like to do our spot our spotlights. Uh, so we gonna we got a little video. Harlem Globetrotters, you know, one of the <laughs> long-standing basketball teams. They, they, they put a lot of work in in uh, New York and all over the country and the world. So we're going to play that video for you guys really quick. And uh, when we come back, we're going to have Ladybug got with us. She got some rumors she's going to get to for the rumor mill. So uh, make sure you guys are following us, realfansrealtalk.com, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk, and of course, subscribe to that YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. You know, we put all the episodes up on the YouTube channel after, so you can watch the interview with uh, with, with Super Bowl champion Walter Thurman over and over again on the YouTube channel. But uh, guys, let us know when you're ready, and we're going to rock and roll. Thank you. <laughs> It all began in 1926. America's home team was born. Barnstorming the countryside. Battling tremendous adversity. defeating numerous opponents and becoming world champions. They defeated the odds and soon became American icons. beginning 90 years ago to now. Traveling to six continents and 122 countries. They have entertained over 140 million fans. They are America's home team. They are the Harlem Globetrotters. All right. Welcome back once again. It seems that even with the Super Bowl champion on the set with us, we still get tweeted and, and, and messaged on Facebook. You know, Lady Where's Bug Ladybug? Yeah. Why is Ladybug not on the set? We want to hear the rumor mill. <laughs> Listen, the Super Bowl is over. Football season is done. Let's just get to it. So without any further ado, Ladybug, what's going on? What's up? What's up, guys? As always, it's your favorite Ladybug. Another week of Real Fans Real Talk. But you know I had to stop. Have to stop. I had to stop and do this for my man Cliff. Because I said this last week. Did he pay you to do this? And no, no. And I wore, if, if we could go back last week, I wore green. And I just wanted to make it known that, you know, I wasn't no hype beast. I wasn't jumping on no bandwagon. I, you know, was on the record that I said the Eagles was going to win. I was, I was, I was very Thank shut. You, I, you got, I got you, honey. I got you. When y'all see Ladybugs, but that's for the all next I'm saying. Weeks, gonna know why. Oh, you see? And that's what happened. There was a suspension. You, 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 see, yeah, you see what happened? Ladybug is always almost on suspension. You <laughs> see why? I, least, I can't live. At least, at least once a month, Listen, Ladybug's on suspension. I can't, I can't, I can't win with y'all. But I just want to say shout outs to the uh, Eagles. Y'all got it. And I just had to go. This is not really the rumor mill. It, it, it was really blown out of proportion, but it was like 80% true. Philly went crazy. 
And 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 that's literally Philly went crazy. They they destroyed a lot of property. Yeah, I need to get a little bit together. I know y'all won, but there was a lot of properties destroyed, cars turned over. It was crazy. Yeah, police officers dapping up the fans. And Eagles fans. Like you don't see that when the Yankees were the Giants won the championship. <laughs> we go, we get drunk, we celebrate at the parade, we celebrate in our own way. We don't flip over. But you know it, it was stuff. for all of you all of you put downers. That was just that was just the the amp. Lady Buck, what, what, what you I'm got for us on the room, Mel, please? Look, look. We, I just told I'm you, sorry. football season if is I'm over, gonna that's it. I'm going to have to run my it's time over. out and just say what's true and what's happening, and that the Eagles won the Super Bowl, like I said. Yeah, we, we mentioned I'm that. Just we saying. Yeah. Cliff is I'm just saying. I, I didn't give. I wasn't no, here, no so I just had to make that note. Anyway, shout out. Moving on. Anyway. Um, we have to give two big congratulations. You know, I love to celebrate new life and all that good stuff. First and foremost, J.R. Smith, he's having a girl. He announced they did the gender reveal, so congratulations to him on having his girl. You know, need to put your shirt on more now, papa. Your daughter can't be seeing that. That's all I'm saying. He was at but, the parade a few years ago with his daughter with no shirt but on. Yeah, I'm saying, I, <laughs> that's I'm saying, I'm saying, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get better. We gotta get better. We gotta get better. That's all I'm saying. You know, you got another one. We gotta get better. It's not cute. Um, but another congratulations, Alonzo Ball, his girlfriend. They confirmed that they are having a baby. She's four months pregnant. Big baller brand. Uh, yeah, and and they are definitely. <laughs> did Levar, uh, did Lo, Devar okay that? Okay, yeah. I, I, I don't know if he was yeah. in the room. I don't know if he, yeah. I don't think he was in the room. I think I think that was just, you know, his own big He's supposed to pick his grandbabies. You don't just, yeah, like, don't. you know. <laughs> yeah, he don't. You just can't. You just can't be out there getting pregnant yeah. with your girlfriend. Right? Exactly. It don't work that way. Not, not, well, no, they, you know, they were high school. Family. They were high school sweethearts. You know, she supported the families, you know, very fond of her. That was, you know, the rumors. The family's very fond of her. Uh, you know, they're expecting to, you know, reveal the gender. And I guess, you know, they're going to be traveling since he's overseas. And they're going to make it work. Congrats. So congratulations. Congrats. <laughs> congratulations on that note. But, oh, oh yeah, talk, we're talking about that. How do you feel? about this now like you know he, he went overseas he's doing this now he got the baby on the way do you think he's going the right you think it's the right nah Lonzo's here Lonzo oh no yeah you're right the, it's the, the other brothers, two yeah. I'm sorry yeah. I mean, but how do you how is that now just coming he in he's he with the Lakers here now the baby he good he got, I mean, he got Ma nice Moni, cars yeah my only concern would be you know he's so young in the game you know the, the time that it's going to take for him to perfect this craft and become the player that they expect him to be, yeah. and then yeah. try to be a family man. Like it's going to take a toll on him. And I think, like you said, this, the the media eye is going to pick at oh, that yeah. every single yeah. thing. Like yeah, everything it might that help happens him, from it might, it might get him focused. You know, he might want listen. I want to stick around in this league for a long time. I want to show my, my my child that you know, listen, your daddy came into this league and he did what he, everything he wanted to do. So it might help him, you know, get back on this game. You think that's just going to be like? I don't know. I would hope so anyway. Or Lavar can continue to dictate everything. Yeah. I, I don't think. Like, I don't think that. Well, the ball probably. They're probably gonna. He's gonna raise his baby be anyway. He's not. You know, yeah, Lonzo got to have him in the lab. Like, oh, yeah. he's training him right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. 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 get them hammies loose sense. right away. Yeah, you exactly. guys. Anyway, congratulations. He's not gonna be burping. He's gonna be doing burpees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> baby. Um. So, question. This is a rumor. I want to know the guys' opinion. You know, we got stat man. They, they really keep it honest with me. Le'Veon Bell wants a hundred million dollars to pay for the Jets. I can agree with that. Do you want it? Jets, do you, that's what it would take for me to go play for the Jets if I was Le'Veon Bell. So I can understand that. Like you want to actually play for a winning organization, yes. and if not, at least be compensated, you know, heavily for it. Yeah. So yeah, so I can understand just that. all around. Yeah, I mean, he could name his own price. I mean, <laughs> NFL contract. Yeah, yeah, but NFL bad. contracts are partially guaranteed. So. You know, the signing bonus money and all that, that's what he really wants. Mm -hmm. They could throw out the hundred million and then he'd be off the team in two years. Yep. Um but Le'Veon Bell is the best running back. You get a little 40, 50 million up front though. Le'Veon's yeah. the best running back in football. So, so he, he deserves to be paid like it. Yeah. Dual threat for sure. I mean yeah. Yeah, he do the most for you. Yeah. yeah, he had some injuries and stuff like that too, but he's definitely Yeah, he's he's, he's the top guy though. Yeah. Who's one someone if, on the other hand, who's someone that three. you just they would ask that you think they would ask like, no, this player doesn't deserve it. I mean, there's a lot of players. <laughs> so no, I'm saying, what's the first that comes to mind? 
Garoppolo in the San Francisco? Actually, no. Nah, I think he should have got paid that money he got. He just got yeah, that well, five-year I mean, deal. Still a little new, as far as he went. He went yeah, but he went. He went five and zero with a, a yeah. team that was horrible. But he, he could yeah. be pulling a Nick Foles where he falls off for a while and then maybe comes back. Nah, I think, I think Jimmy G is the real deal. <laughs> yeah. I think Jimmy G is the real deal. I think. Uh, I mean, I guess you would have to say like whatever Kirk Cousins is about to get because Kirk Cousins yeah. never let his team to the playoffs. You know, Alex Smith at least has been to the playoffs and has some success. But he's more of a game manager and all Doesn't that. Doesn't matter. But, he's gone to the playoffs yeah. with yeah. two different teams, and he's, he's been there several times. Kirk Cousins hasn't even broken into the playoffs yet. And it's tough for Alex Smith, too, because he's always had new offensive coordinators yeah. every year. A lot of different in, coaches. Especially yeah. Fran, though. Yeah, so, I mean, he can still sling it. Yeah. And we've, we've seen a little bit of that with yeah. the, with the yeah. Chiefs. Yeah, if you yeah. give him the weapons, I mean, Kirk Cousins had weapons last year. And he had great numbers on paper, but then when you look at the team, they they yeah. can't make the playoffs. They can't win any important games. So, well, here on Real Fans, Real Talk, we're always about them getting money. So that's really yeah, no yeah, answer yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get that paycheck, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you guys said that. Was yeah. Smooth. Yeah. Get the check. Yeah. Get the check. Smooth. I, I, I do, before we run out of time, I do want to. Uh, promote uh, the film that you produced, the producing chapter and verse. You want to okay, talk yeah. about that? Yeah, chapter and verse uh, starring uh, Daniel Beatty and uh, Amari Harwick uh, for Power, uh, directed by J uh, Jamal Joseph. Yeah, that was uh, came in right before I uh, signed with the the Giants. You know, we started that uh, development of that film uh, that summer, going into training camp and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. really bringing in the, the Harlem culture and stuff like that, and getting uh, acclimated to the city. You know, it was a great project. Uh, it's out on uh, VOD and stuff like that right now. Um, you should go check it out. Yeah. You, you working on anything now? On the, on the film side? On the film side, uh, doing a biography on Eddie Levert. Mm -hmm. The documentary, yeah, of the OJs. You know, so he has a he has a great compelling story. Uh, there's a couple other things that we have in the in the works as well. Right now, mainly getting that um, the fans the fan stereo headphone line out and mm -hmm. uh, the music distribution. So, yeah. Um, also, because I know we ran on a long time, but. You do a lot of philanthropy work, and I know uh, one of the things <coughs> that we spoke about um, and uh, when, when we first met was the going over to rescue uh, the kidnapped victims. Mm -hmm. And you said it cost about four hundred thousand dollars to rescue one child. From, from yeah, it's uh, a Children's uh, Rescue Alliance is the name of the organization, and they help with the facilitation of, of rescued uh, traffic kids. You know. Uh, it's a mad epidemic out there going across the, the whole country mm. and um, and also being taken over international. And so uh, it, it can cost up to, you know, $250,000 just to be able to rescue one of these kids with all the intel that goes into it and, you know, fuel and, and some of the, you know, some of the details, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those things to where just trying to do the most I can to help with that situation, being able to promote that and just understanding how... Um, close it is and close to home it is to, to us you know one uh, one kid goes missing every 10 minutes in the United States mm. you know um, large sports venues like the Super Bowl and basketball games and stuff like that kids are getting snatched up there too you know parents are out there uh, having a good time they lose their kids for you know three seconds it only takes three seconds for the kid to go missing and they're gone you know so I mean it's yeah. one of those things to where I just be need to be more aware and attention especially to the young parents out there you know that uh, you know think it's just you know just all fun and games to have a kid, but there's a lot of a uh, lot of responsibility that goes into it of taking care of kids and, and being able to understand the world that we live in. You know, not everyone's is nice out there, unfortunately. You know, yeah. but we all can do our part to be able to make that change. Got you. With uh, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Thurman, we appreciate you for 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 coming through today. We're gonna have to get you back at, at oh, some yeah, point, man. <laughs> um, make sure that you guys. Y'all better get them fans there headphones. I'm telling you, they're on point. I, I wish I'd have had my name in my pocket right now. I don't got time to run out and go get them. We might be able to get some. So we yeah, show y'all real quick. Hold on, we got someone saying, come, 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 bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Let's right show them real quick before, before, before we get up out of here. Well, that's, that's the A.O. and Taylor with the rollies on and all that. Yeah, get, can we get a zoom in on one of these cameras real quick? Yeah. So we'll sit them down and y'all could do a raffle or some kind of little sweepstakes with some of the product line and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sounds yeah. good. The, for different charities, great that you're involved in that, and hopefully we'll have you involved in some of our charity events in the future. Oh exactly. yeah, most definitely. I mean, we're we're actually doing working on some partnerships right now in the, the charity space with some some big uh, organizations out there, uh, getting something to work with the with the AIDS Foundation and some other organizations. So um, 
the whole company is about philanthropy. You know, it's all about inspiring the youth and, and showing them, regardless of your background, you can achieve and inspire to be anything. You know, that's the main focus at the end of the day. So, yeah. All right. We'll end off with that because we're cutting the live feed in about 20 <laughs> seconds. But we do appreciate having a Super Bowl champion. We had the heavyweight champion of the world, plenty of champions. First Super Bowl champion on Real Fans Real Talk, and it was a pleasure having you. Yeah. Thank you for appreciate joining us on Real Fans Real Talk, and have a good night, everyone. Good night. Yeah. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and intern Tom. But the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor, tell them about the city. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com.